Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to give you an overview of the type of products that are available for use as circuit breakers on your model railroad. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I guess the first question people would have is, why do you want to use some sort of circuit breaker on your model railroad? Well, consider that you have uh, a layout with, you know, a four by eight foot layout. And it's hooked up to your, you know, your command station or command station booster combination. And you've basically got a standard four by eight foot uh, with a yard maybe and an industrial switching area somewhere on the other side of the layout and you know some running track in between. Um, Any time though that somebody who is switching in the yard runs through a closed switch it creates a short and it shuts down the whole model railroad. Everybody on your layout has to stop and you know if that's just you running your layout then it's not a problem. But if you're trying to do prototype operations with two or three guys running trains and everybody has to stop and wait because one person ran through a closed switch, it gets annoying after a while. Uh, and a circuit breaker can prevent that. So basically what a circuit breaker does is it literally acts like the circuit breakers in your household circuits. And if a short occurs, it will shut down only that section of the layout. So you could take that four by eight foot layout and break it up into three or four different sections. You might have a block uh, that is isolated uh, electrically and uh, that would be your yard area. And then the industrial switching area on the other side of the layout, that might be a separate block. And then finally you might have uh, a block that provides power to those running sections in between them. And because of that, any time that someone creates a short in either the industrial area or in the yard or out on the main line uh, running sections, uh, it would isolate the others uh, from that short. And your whole uh, layout doesn't get shut down. So what you can do, though, to minimize that impact is use a circuit breaker. So let's go ahead and start looking at an overview of the various kinds of circuit breakers available. And in this video, uh, you know, I just don't have time to go over every option of every one of these. So there, I'll just cover some broad classes. And then in subsequent videos, I will take each one and we'll go over them in some detail. So let's go ahead and get started with the simplest and easiest type of circuit breaker. And I say that with quotes because it really isn't a circuit breaker. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the uh, the most basic form of a circuit breaker, and you know I put little quotes around circuit breaker because this really isn't a circuit breaker, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, what it is, it's a standard 12 volt uh, DC light bulb, okay, and it came you know it's an automotive uh, tail light bulb, but it's 12 volts, okay, and it has some amperage associated with it. And I'll explain why that's important in a minute. Um, what The way this works though is, if you take one of these 12 volt uh, tail light bulbs and you wire it in to the circuit going uh, to a block on your layout, uh, just one of the wires is all you need. You only need one of these to each isolated block. But you just wire this into one of the feeders going to your track. And all I've done here is soldered a wire to one of each of the two tabs or solder or contacts on the bottom here. And in some cases you'll have one contact on the bottom and solder to the case. So, you know, there's different ways of doing these. But what I want to show you is this one. And what happens is when you turn on the layout and you've got trains running, um, the current will flow through from you know, your, bo your booster or your command station uh, through the filament in this bulb and it will pass on through to your track and your trains will run. As you increase the load on this bulb, okay, as you increase the number of trains that are operating and the speed at which they're running and therefore the amperage that they're drawing, then this little bulb filament is going to start to glow. And then as it gets closer and closer to the full amperage that this bulb uses, 
this bulb is going to come on, come on full brightness. And any time that you have a short on the layout, what will happen is your uh, your booster or your command station will start pumping the full three volt, three amps or five amps or whatever amperage it's rated at through this uh, bulb. Okay. The neat thing about it is that this bulb will not go more than its rated amperage. So if this bulb is rated at one amp, that's all the current that it's going to let flow to your track. If it's at two amps or if it's three amps, it will allow that much to go through. And it will not allow the entire five amps or six or seven or eight to go through to your track. So this really is not a circuit breaker, it's a, a limiter. Okay? So it limits the amount of current that can flow through the track and potentially damage your, um, um, your wheels and your um, side frames on your locomotives, things of that nature. If you allow the, the uh, current to flow and keep flowing too long, uh, you can actually build up enough heat in uh, the, um, uh, between the track and the wheels and the like uh, flowing due to the short flowing through there uh, to literally uh, melt side frames and do other things. Um, but basically what these do then is they limit the amount of current. So it's one thing that you can do is uh, use different types of these uh, bulbs and you can find out the amperage rating at the, at the store. It's typically available on the package. So that's how these work. So they work great in certain conditions. And as long as you realize that they do not cut the power off, they simply limit the amount of current flowing through the short circuit on your track. And hopefully they limit it to the point that it does, does not do any damage. And so there's different ways to go about it. You can use these. These, I believe, uh, came from uh, an overhead light in, from an automobile. And I think this one here is rated at a little over an amp. This one's probably three quarters of an amp. Um, this is a device that is sold by NCE and it's called their CP6. And basically what it is, it's got six different of these uh, overhead bulbs. And what they do is they're rated at 12 volts and one amp. Okay, so you could break your layout up into six separate blocks, and that's electrically isolated block, and then you could run your power from your booster or your command station in here, and then you could have six different sets of, of feeder wires going out to those blocks on your layout. And any time a short occurred in any one of those, the bulb would come on and, and light up and limit the amount of current flowing to that short circuit to, in this case, I believe, one amp. And they have also one and three quarter amp bulbs that you can purchase separately. So you, it's a really nice little uh, device that they've put together that is based on this ballast lamp principle. Okay, And I believe this sells for, well, when I got this one, it was $34.95. So, um, it's not a bad deal. That's six bucks roughly per uh, block that you're protecting. And then anytime, you know, as soon as you remove the short or fix, you know, cycle the uh, switch or move the locomotive that's uh, causing the problem, then the light will go out and you can run again. Okay. Now, there are a couple of problems with these. Obviously, you do not remove the current, so you still have to deal with the short on your layout. So you can't ignore it. Uh, the other thing is uh, they have a certain warm-up latency, okay, because uh, initially when the bulb is cool, uh, it might not come on as fast as when the bulb has fully warmed up and trains have been running through that block. That's just one of the, the small downsides. And I'll get more into that kind of stuff at a later date uh, when I show you how to build a circuit using these guys here that... Um, comes on at one amperage and then after a certain amount of time trips down to a lower amperage. So we'll get into that and I'll show you how to put these together and install them. So that's uh, that's the ballast lamp approach. Now let's go ahead and look at something that's a little bit more sophisticated. This is a Digitrax PM42 power manager and basically uh, what it does is it's got four relays in here so you can uh, protect four separate 
isolated blocks on your layout and you can uh, change the amperage that they operate at. Okay, And um, there's a lot of different features on this. The main uh, thing I want to point out about this is these are a true circuit breaker. When a short occurs, they will flip the relay circuit in here and it will turn power off to the shorted block. Okay, So once that happens, it will periodically cycle and try to turn power on again. And if the, the uh, short is still there, it will shut off again. So you've got four protections here built in. And you can, as I say, you can uh, select the operating amperage. And um, the only drawback with this is some people have expressed concern over the fact that because it is a mechanical relay, it operates somewhat slower than electronic, uh, fully electronic solid state devices that I'll show you in a minute. And as a result, uh, people that are using Z scale or N scale have expressed a concern because because they these are slower you can get an arc created at the short if a, if a locomotive's wheels are, are involved and with that arcing you can get pitting of the wheels in in larger scales I don't think it's as much of a concern I've never noticed it being a problem with my layout where I use this guy and uh, but that's just one thing to be aware of and the good thing is, though, it is a true circuit breaker, and it does temp uh, periodically try to reset automatically. So if you pull the locomotive back out where it's shorting or if it's derailed, if you uh, re-rail it, uh, then the short will go away, and this will reset, and you can be running again. Now, this is a DCC, I'm going to turn it this way, uh, is a DCC Specialties uh, PSX4. So it has four individual circuit boards here. And you can buy these in one, two, three, and four arrangements, okay? And actually, you can go through, and these can be popped apart uh, if you're very careful about it. You can cut uh, in between these boards, and uh, you would have uh, four individual boards or various combinations thereof. But you can buy these. Uh, they're, you know, they're available. Tony's Train Exchange uh, is the primary uh, main, uh, uh, outlet for these. They're the ones behind DCC Specialties, and you can purchase these from them. Um, like I've said in a previous video, the DCC Specialties website itself is no longer available. Um, um, but the great thing about these are these are a totally solid state system. And basically what I have done here is I run in my two wires uh, from my command station here, and then, then it's daisy chained to the other three in line. And then on this end, you would have two wires going out to each one of your blocks. And when a short occurs, these things trip very quickly because it's a totally solid state device. And these are very, very fast. You can change the trip rate on these. And there are cases where you want to do that. And I'll get into that more detail uh, later. But I have been using this one now for about uh, four, five years, I think. And, you know, they're very reliable, very, very reliable. So this is, you know, one of my favorite uh, circuit breakers, and they are a true circuit breaker. Uh, when the short uh, clears, they will automatically reset. They also have various features built in uh, that is programmable that allows you to operate with uh, lower uh, power um, uh, command stations and boosters. I will, like I said, go over this one in some detail at a later date. Okay, now this is another one. This is a uh, one that is made by uh, NCE. This is their uh, EB1 uh, circuit breaker, and it is a true circuit breaker. And there's a lot of features available on here. There's some set um, uh, jumpers here that you can use. There's uh, screw terminals for the input and the output, uh, you know, input from your DCC system and output to the track. Okay, so they're basically... Uh, Similar to the larger uh, PSX1234 versions, uh, they're just one isolated board. So they are a very nice option. Uh, this one here sells for, or sold for at the time, $29.95. And I, the last time I checked, this was available for about $150 online. 
Okay, so you get uh, four of them for 150. Um, that works out to less than 40 bucks each. So it's a very good bargain when you buy them in bulk like that. Okay, one other thing that I recently covered in a in an article in Model Railroader in one of my DCC corner columns are these two devices from a company called Volt Scooter Electronics, and I will uh, put the link to their websites in the description for this video. And basically, these two are a uh, solid state circuit breaker, okay, and they're just different versions of the same thing. But both of these act as two circuit breakers. They both allow you to set the, uh, the uh, operational amperages uh, on them. And like I said, I covered these in more detail in Model Railroader. Okay, so these then are just a, a fairly inexpensive, comparably. Okay, that's all I have to show you. These are just uh, examples of some of the most popular ones and readily available ones on the market. Uh, I'm sure that if you have a favorite DCC uh, company and manufacturer, that they probably offer one of these. Just about everybody out there is making some type of circuit breaker device. Well, I hope that gives you a better idea of why you might want to use circuit breakers on your model railroad and the types of products that you have to choose from. So if you really are interested in this, you know, you can refer to articles that I've written in Model Railroader in the DCC corner column and also in my books available from Combook. So particularly the uh, book on wiring your model railroad. And that's available from the Combook uh, Hobby Store or uh, from Amazon.com. So that's about all I have for this week. Have a great weekend and we'll see you hopefully again the first of next week with a new video. Bye now.